it won't cut you. It's very dull. It will rub the crap out of the inside of your hand. It's gonna let it sit in that oil. Watching the edge of the blade. The mustard nice and evenly coated it. Camouflage, tiger stripe look. Machete, the tip of the machete is very dull. You'll notice that there's a slurry that kind of develops. Oh, okay. I'm gonna pull it through. This is just about the perfect machete. Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Jason, and as many of you know, my favorite tool in the entire world is a machete. I enjoy using them very, very much. And one of my favorite things to do is to take cheap machetes and turn them into something that's very nice. This is a Tramatina machete. Very inexpensive and very rough and crude as it comes. If you purchase one of these machetes for, let's say, you know, 20 bucks or so, something like that, it's going to come dull. It won't cut you. It's very dull, right? I can run my hand along the edge without fear of getting cut. Um, it has this kind of polyurethane clear coat on the blade. The handle is kind of rough and it's going to give you a blister back here on the back until it gets good and broke in. Well, your hands will probably take a lot of wear and tear before you break it in but uh it just comes rough and crude and it needs some love to turn it into something really really nice that you can really enjoy using it doesn't take that long doesn't take that many tools with just these items right here you can take this inexpensive machete and turn it into something that works really really good for you this is just a four-in-one wood rasp file that's really, really handy for shaping and contouring wood. And you can use it to sharpen the blade and stuff like that as well. Sandpaper to work the contours and clean up the handle and a simple whetstone like this to bring it to a keen, sharp edge and it would be ready for action. But I like to take the extra steps and turn it into something that's really nice. So we're gonna be doing some linseed oil we're gonna do a forced patina with some yellow mustard right there, clean off some of that varnish or whatever they have clear coated on here that keeps it from rusting. We're gonna get rid of that. Um, and then we're gonna do some custom engraving work in there. And I think it's gonna be something that, that someone like, definitely like myself, but someone like you would really, really enjoy using. And it's just, there's something about having a tool that you can really appreciate in your hand. You know, a, a wooden handled thing that you've carved and crafted yourself a little bit. You know, you've, you've customized it, fine tuned it the way that you like it. It just makes the user experience that much more enjoyable. And there's something to be said about that. That's a valuable thing. So let's turn this very cheap machete into something very valuable. So not required, but definitely very helpful is a bench vise. If you don't have a bench vise at home, you should invest in one because man, it is, it is a time saver for sure. And it just helps solve the problem. It's a helper. It holds things for you while you can get some work done. But like I said, if you don't have any special grinders or anything like that, you can do all of the work shaping the handle with just this four in one rasp file here. The flat edges you can use the flat side of the file here and any contours you can typically get away with using that side right there really really nice if i want to remove a lot of material fast i use that rasp and it will take away material off the top of that handle because as you can see there's extra material on this handle right there and that raised bit of wood right there will rub the crap out of the inside of your hand until eventually either your hand gets wore out or you wear the wood down a little bit with just the use, which definitely is a thing. But if you can eliminate some of that extra wood at the very beginning, it'll, uh, it'll keep you from getting a blister right there in the middle of your palm. So uh, you can use a wood rasp like this and just slowly start to remove that material right there until you get it down to the tang, the steel, uh, and that's what we're looking for. And then once I get close, I can switch it over to the finer side of the file and I can work it like that. And then I can finish it up with just some sandpaper and I can work it back and forth here and I can smooth out those, 
those uh, ridges and rough, hard corners and stuff. I don't like to have any of that on the handle. So, but I could speed that process up a lot. Move my dinosaur out of the way. Helps if you plug it in. These cut resistant gloves are pretty nice for jobs like this. I mean, like I said, that machete's not very sharp, but, but, and plus if you touch your hand to that sandpaper, that kind of sucks. I've got it pretty close now. I've got just about all of the material off there that I want. Now, I'll just work around some of those hard edges there and I'll get rid of some of those. Now, I'm just going to come over here to some of the concaved curvatures here and I'm going to use the, uh, use the thin belt. There's the rough shapage, just kind of rounded off those hard edges, got rid of the extra material on the tang there, keep you from getting rubbed raw on your hand. And now we can fine tune it just by hand. We can use that rasp if we want to, or most likely all I'm gonna need is just a little bit of sandpaper work. This is some 80 grit. What's on the belt sander over there is 60 grit. This is 80, and then I'll finish the handle off with 120. I don't need some sort of fine, you know, fine furniture grade finish on here. We just need a smooth enough handle. With use, it's gonna it's gonna get smooth as well. All right, we've got it looking really nice and contoured and rounded. No hard edges, no extra wood sticking up. And we're gonna switch over to 120 to kind of finish it off. Hello, ducks. <laughs> Looks pretty dang nice, in my opinion. Nice and rounded, smooth, no hard edges no clean lines, and feels awesome in the hand. Like I said before, the blades come with some sort of varnish clear coat thing on there that keeps them from rusting, and I don't like that. I mean, maybe you like it, you don't care, you want that on there, but eventually it's probably gonna rust anyway, and it just doesn't look nice. I would rather have a nice patinaed finish on there, and that's just what I prefer. So just an extra step, let's get some of that off there. I've always liked projects like this. I, um, you know, grew up with my papa. We used to make knives out of old files and stuff like that. And I've always just kind of liked crafting and making my own tools. And it's just been really enjoyable to me. There's something about it. I don't know. Something about, you know, putting your special, uh, you know, custom touches on the tools that you use makes the jobs that you do with them much more enjoyable. I don't really understand it. It just... There's something special about it, and maybe if you've never experienced that before, you should give it a shot, and, and maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, while I'm at the grinding process over on the belt sander, I... Um, I'm gonna put a 90 degree spine on the back of the machete. It's got a fairly 90 degree spine right now, but it's not a very keen one and it won't scrape a ferro rod. It doesn't do a fantastic job of scraping tenders and stuff like that, barks off of trees. So um, I like to put a 90 degree spine on there. Why? Because I can. You could feel that nice, sharp 90 degree spine that would scrape a ferro rod really, really well, really easily. 
and it can process barks and things like that into tenders or whatever really you need a 90 degree spine to do, it will do it. And that's my preference right there. So we've got most of that varnish off of there. It's looking really good. And now we're ready for the next step. Gonna hit it with the wire brush just in case I missed any little spots of varnish. Get those off of there. Next thing that I like to do is grind a portion of the blade off right here, this sharp part of the blade. Not that it's very sharp, but I like to grind a few inches off right here so I can wrap that with paracord. And what that allows me to do is choke up on the machete right here for finer, more accurate little chops. And I like to have a little bit of paracord just in case anyway. So I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of that, that grind right there. And whatever the thickness of the the blade is right here, the tang right here, I'm gonna carry that on a few inches up so it's gonna look really nice and streamlined. Whatever the thickness of my handle is right here, that's what I want it to be a few inches up right here. There. You could do it with a file, but it would take you forever. So I'm gonna use a bench grinder like that one right there. Right here, there's a little bit of the tang that sticks up and that, if you're choked up on it a little bit, will eventually wear a hole in your hand. So I like to get rid of that as well. And then I'll just round that edge off. Since I'm wrapping it with cordage, I don't want any sharp edges on there. On three Ulus are for sale. We got a few left if you want one. Go to bearforestknives.com. Get yourself an Ulu. Very nice. On three. This jar contains boiled linseed oil. And what I like to do is completely submerge the handles in the oil and let it soak for a few minutes. And that really fills up all the pores. It swells up the wood and tightens up that handle really, really nicely and gives it a nice, really cool finish, a honey colored finish that I think you guys will appreciate as much as I do. And we're just gonna let that soak for a couple minutes now, maybe five minutes or so, just gonna let it sit in that oil and let that wood absorb all that oil into its pores. All right. That's about done drip drying, wipe off the excess cap up our jar and move on to the next step. That's looking really nice. The 120 grit sandpaper gives it a nice smooth finish, but not slick. And I like that. I think 120 is kind of the perfect. Anything, anything finer would, would make it a little bit too smooth for my, for my preference. And then just with use, it's going to smooth out with just use. The harder you use the thing, the more it's going to waller down the handle. Anyway, Let's put a, uh, an edge on here. Now, these machetes basically come with a Scandi grind for the most part. So what I want to do is I want to convex it just a little bit. And a convex edge, the reason why I like a convex edge is because it's gonna be a little bit more durable. The edge of a Scandi grind is gonna be a little bit fragile for hard, hard use. 
and it's going to have a tendency to kind of roll the edge a little bit or chip it or whatever and we don't want we don't have time for that so i like to convex them a little bit and i think it just makes it easier to sharpen in the field as well you don't have to be so accurate with the angle um, at which you're sharpening and that's just my personal preference some people like the scandy grind it, it definitely slices through foliage and loose hanging vines and stuff like that really well with this grind as long as it's sharp but uh but i prefer just a little bit of a convex edge on there watching the edge of the blade just taking off a little bit of that hard edge right there that heart where the grind begins, I'm taking off just a little bit of that. And now I'll work on the actual edge just a little bit and I'll get that a little bit keener, a little bit sharper. I'm not putting any pressure on it and just barely touching it to the sandpaper. I've convexed the edge a little bit by getting rid of that hard line right there where the grind begins. And then I've changed the, the angle, the bevel a little bit at the very finish of the edge as well. So I've kind of, and I guess if you're not familiar with what a convex edge is, it start the blade starts with a kind of a scandy grind that looks like that. And what I've done is I've kind of rounded it off just a little bit and in my opinion that makes it more durable and makes the edge last a lot longer and i don't know about you but when i'm not using a tool i don't have time to, for maintenance i want to be able to use the thing all day long without having to touch it up for the most part i mean obviously if you hit a rock or something like that you might need to do some work but for the most part i want to be able to keep working all day long and then at the end of the day or beginning of the next day i can touch up the edge so i like a convex edge for that reason just because it's more durable and this would be functional i mean this would be usable as is for a machete like this for a tool that's designed for bushwhacking uh the edge that's on it right now would be serviceable would be would be fine mustard contains vinegar and salt and the combination of those two things is going to quickly basically rust the blade and then we are going to remove that material, the uh, mustard off of there, and then oil it up, and that'll stop the process of it rusting further. Now we've got the mustard nice and evenly coated in that cool swirl pattern. We're just gonna let that sit for a while, probably 20, 30 minutes or so, and that will probably give us our desired effect. All right, let's see what we've got. This has been on there for probably 30 minutes, maybe a little longer, something like that. Let's clean her off. Now I think that that's pretty cool. It gives it this kind of camouflage tiger stripe look. And we could leave it on there a little bit more and make it darker, make it a little bit more pronounced. But honestly, with time and with use, it's gonna get its own patina anyway. This just kind of gives it a nice, nice really cool jump start. I'm just gonna put a really nice keen edge on it with a whetstone. I like the whetstone. I like diamond stones too, and we might use that a little bit on here just to give it a really nice, nice edge. But I like to use the whetstone. It just feels, Feels like it gives it a really good polished finish. Some of you are maybe wondering about the tip of this machete. The tip of the machete is very dull. It's not sharpened at all. And that is on purpose. And I'm not gonna sharpen it either because when you use a machete, you'll realize very quickly that you could spend a lot of time sharpening that tip. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna hit a rock, you're gonna hit the ground, you're gonna hit something because typically you're chopping near the ground or near fence posts and 
or whatever, and you're going to end up dulling the crap out of the tip of your machete anyway. So this last couple inches of the blade is really just a sacrificial tip anyway. You're gonna bounce that off rocks and now you don't even have to worry about it because you didn't spend an hour trying to get it sharp. It's always important to wet your stone I mean, you don't have to do it every single time if you're just doing a quick touch up, I guess. But if you're doing some serious sharpening, you should always wet your stone because what it does is it, it the water carries away the debris from sharpening and it doesn't fill up the pores of the stone and render it useless. You don't want it to get slick because you filled up all those pores with metal and, and stone uh, particulates. So if you wet it, you'll notice that there's a slurry that kind of develops like a gray slurry and that carries away that debris and will keep your stone working. And like I said before, I like a convex edge because you don't have to be, you don't have to be so dang precise with the angle at which you're sharpening it. You can kind of just quickly run the blade across that at, at the approximately the right angle and get the thing really sharp. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just letting the kind of the weight of the machete do the work. And I'm just working it back and forth, using trying to use the whole stone and not just the middle because what happens, it's gonna happen anyway, but the stone will get this kind of this uh this bevel, this this wallered out concavity to it if you just stick to the very, very middle. So I try to use the whole stone as much as I can. And I'm just changing the angle. I'll I'll work a few passes at one angle, like that. It's kind of a steep angle and then I'll, I'll flatten it out a little bit and I'll work it a little bit more and that convexes that grind. About five minutes of good sharpening on our whetstone there and I just barely touched it with the diamond to remove the burr. Seems to be the easiest way in my experience to do that. And let's see what we've got. Oh, okay. Hair shaven sharp. That thing is wicked. Now, last but not least, let's get a paracord wrap on there. Just your standard 550 cord. And that much of a wrap, based on my experience, takes about one pull. So let's say about six feet of, of cordage, give or take. So what I do is I hold the paracord about an inch, inch and a half or so. I give it a tag end right here and I hold it on the blade really nice and tight up towards the handle. And I'll give it one wrap around and then over top of itself like that. And that binds it in place and that won't come, come loose. And then as I wrap, I'm wrapping really tight. If you wrap it tight, it won't come loose on you. So every time I do a wrap, I give it a really good pull. Every time I come around the side there. Keeping that cordage nice and straight. I'm kind of picky. You don't have to, but the OCD in me wants it to be straight. Coming around like so. And I think what I've struck, what I haven't liked in the past is when that sticks up a little bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash that flat. Smooth taper. And then I keep wrapping. I'm gonna stick this extra piece of cordage in here, like so. And I'm going to wrap over top of it now, giving myself a loop at the end. And I'm going to go really tight, really putting some force onto the wrapping each time. When I get all the way to that cutting edge right there, that's my last wrap. I'm going to take this, the rest of it, and I'm going to stick it through that loop that I tucked under there. And I'm going to pull that loop up tight, just like that. And then I'm going to trim this short enough where, where it's going to get tucked underneath those wraps there. Just 
I'm gonna pull it through. Like that, and melt it off. I'm gonna finish off with just a couple drops of oil on each side. Not really that necessary, to be honest with you. With heavy use, if you're using this thing a lot, you'll wear the rust off of it if any builds up. There you have it. I think that this is just about the perfect machete. All the hard edges are gone on the handle. It's been treated with boiled linseed oil, soaked in boiled linseed oil, so that should last a really, really good long time. Shouldn't have to retreat it with oil for quite a while unless you just, I don't know, leave it out in the leave it out in the elements. Um, it is razor sharp, super sharp, ready for action wrapped up with paracord so you can choke up on it you can get in there you could do some more delicate fine fine carving type chopping little small accurate chops by having that paracord wrap in there and plus you can get that off of there and just have some paracord handy if you should want it i think it is perfect an 18 inch machete like this one is just long enough it's not too long where it's it's too weight forward too too heavy out on the end and it wears your forearm out using it but it's just long enough where you don't really have to bend over too much. You can almost get to the ground, cut at ground level without having to bend over hardly at all. So I feel like this is just about the perfect size for a machete. I like the wooden handle. You know, I think that micarta is super durable and I really, really like the micarta or like the composite plasticky type handles because they zero maintenance, they last a long time, they're virtually indestructible. But there's just something about the feel of the wood handle that's just much more appealing and just more enjoyable. I, I like the wood handle in tools like this. Uh, I mean, I like the micartas and stuff like that, as, of course, as well, because for the reasons I stated before. But something just in the user experience is nice with a wood handle like that. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys watching. I have considered selling these. I've considered uh, buying them in, in large orders because I can get them a little bit cheaper fixing them up just like this one and then selling it oh there's one more thing i forgot to do crap almost forgot these machetes come with a decent sheath right here not bad at all they're kind of a nylon-y material and they've got some rigid plastic probably some sort of kydex like material inside there but it comes with this crappy velcro strap and i do not like velcro it's just Something about Velcro bothers me for the most part, especially if you're using it over and over again repetitively. It's just going to wear out. There's going to be dirt stuck all in it. Uh, it's not my thing. So, and now that I've got that paracord wrap on there, the friction fit is much better. So what I like to do is come in here, slice off this crappy Velcro, like so. Take the lighter, melt the ends off. Any loose threads and stuff, I'll clean those up. Look for any loose threads on the sheath. Don't see any here, so maybe there's one there. Clean up that loose thread. Smash it down. And now friction fit, because of that wrap there, it fits in there really nice and secure. I mean, it will come out if you shake the thing upside down, of course, but it's good to go as is in my opinion. And like I was saying, I've considered buying these in kind of bulk and in larger quantities and saving a few dollars and fixing them up and selling them like this um, as a refined Tremetina machete, ready for action, whether you be in the depths of the jungle or the hills of, of North Georgia. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section about that. You know, would you be interested in buying something like this? What would you want to pay for it? What would you be willing to pay for something like this? Because it takes me you know, like I worked on this, well, filming it takes significantly longer. But if I was just paying attention to this, it'd probably take me an hour, hour and a half, I'd say, you know, somewhere in that ballpark, I could probably get a little faster at it. But that's about how long it takes me to get one in the shape that it's in right here. So my time is valuable. And I'd like to know what you think something like this would be worth if you'd be interested in purchasing something like this, the On3 modified refined machete. 
Thanks, guys. Really do appreciate you watching. Thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share this video with anybody. It does not matter who you share the video with, another account that you have. The shares are really, really helpful, and I'd be very grateful for it. Cannot wait to see you on the next one.